David Gaskin, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Hi, John. It is a pleasure to be with you. I'm super excited to have a nice conversation with you today. You're joining us from Southern California. I'm here in Utah, south of Salt Lake City. And today we're going to be talking about expanding international financial services and fintech operations into Europe. Uh, your background is unique in that you know, you're a, a vice president uh, of IDA Ireland. I'll give you a chance to share a little bit more about what that's all about. Um, and, and so you're going to give us some ideas around how you go about that scalable, uh, sustainable expansion into European markets uh, from an organizational leadership and people management lens. As we get started, I wanted to share David's bio with everybody. As I mentioned, David Gaskin is Vice President of International Financial Services and FinTech at IDA Ireland. He is an experienced financial services manager with a demonstrated history of working in the international trade and development industry. He is skilled in business planning, international business management, startups, and marketing. David is a strong finance professional with a diploma in applied project management from the Institute of Project Management in Dublin. Pleasure to have you. Anything else you would like to add before we launch on into the conversation today? You know, hi, John. I think it's always interesting when you hear somebody uh, reading your bio, you're like, okay, is, is, is that me? But no, um, yeah, I'm certainly, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm well-traveled, um, you know, having started my sort of career in Australia and then uh, back to Dublin for a few years, over to London, uh, New York, and now, uh, like you said, currently in California. So no, um, yeah, it's been a, an exciting journey to date. Um, so yeah, I'm happy to be here. Well, I, I think that's wonderful. And I, I love traveling too. I've worked uh, in a lot of different places around the world and love to travel for teaching and research as well. Um, being a, an academic uh, professor as well as doing the consulting work. And, and so I try, I consider myself a scholar practitioner. I try to be applied and practical in what I do. Uh, so it's always fun when I get uh, someone with the inner kind of international background like you have uh, onto the podcast to have these conversations and share with listeners. So you are in the financial services and fintech area uh, and you work with IDA Ireland. Maybe we could start there. You can just describe what IDA Ireland is. Uh, I had one of your colleagues on the podcast maybe six months ago or something like that. Um, so some listeners may be familiar with it, um, but for anyone else who may be tuning in and didn't catch that episode, uh, give us a little bit of a background there and then we can launch into uh, a little bit more of an understanding of what you do in the international financial services area and fintech and then talk about expansion. Sure. Um, IDA Ireland is um, the Irish government's inward investment agency, and we partner with companies all around the world um, to help them internationalize and leverage Ireland as a location um, to scale their European, usually their European or EMEA teams. Um, we're heavily focused on the pharmaceutical, medical technology, international financial services and technology sectors. Um, we have a portfolio of about 1,600 clients um, who, who employ about 260,000 people currently in Ireland. And just to put that in context, Ireland's the current population is about 5 million, um, of which about 2 million are at work. So, you know, our portfolio is around 10% of the, of the workforce. So it's fairly significant. Um, like I said, I am uh, based uh, on the West Coast in, in sunny California. And um, I um, am focused on the financial services sector. So I am lucky to uh, count companies like PayPal, Stripe, um, Square, Coinbase, Remitly, and many others as my clients. And I've worked with them to help them establish their European operations. And, and ultimately, they, they established those operations um, in Ireland. So, um, yeah, it's an exciting, varied job. Um, and fintech is certainly um, one that's come to the fore over the last sort of decade. And um, as I'm sure lots of your listeners uh, will know, it's certainly uh, during the last sort of 18 months of COVID, um, there's been this explosion online. And I think fintech companies, I think it's fair to say, have never been busier. So, um, yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting time to be in this space. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. So you, you're, you're looking to support and fund uh, organizations uh, within the, the fintech space. Uh, you've worked with lots of organizations expanding into Europe. 
Tell us a little bit about some of the challenges that fintech companies have been facing, are facing when they're trying to make that initial leap into that new European market. Yeah, um, I, I, I'd certainly dive into that just before I do to give you a little bit of context of the financial services industry in Ireland, just for your listeners, because like I said, fintech has sort of um, been around the last sort of decade. Um, but, you know, Ireland has a well-established um, international financial services center and it's a very mature ecosystem. You know, it sort of has been on the go for the last sort of 40 years. And it's, uh, it's fair to say um, it sort of launched back in the late 80s, early 90s with the establishment of the International Financial Services Centre in Dublin, um, the IFSC. And so companies, um, you know, multinational companies arrive there. And, and, and one longstanding U.S. institution uh, worth mentioning is City, um, who first set up in Ireland all the way back in 1965, would you believe? Um, and I think their initial uh, business there was to support U.S. corporates that were establishing in, in Ireland at the time, like Ford and other companies like that. Um, so, you know, a company like that has evolved over the years and they established a, a services center in the mid 2000s um, and you know they were the first um, sort of company that IDA, first financial services company that IDA supported through uh, helping them establish a research and development uh, innovation lab. So that's just to give you a flavor for um, the, um, the long-standing, um, you know, ecosystem that has evolved. And, you know, it's spread across investment management and servicing, aircraft leasing, insurance, and banking. And now fintech and payments, which is, you know, my sort of not main focus, but, you know, I'd say 75% of my time is, is focused on uh, fintech and payment companies over here on the West Coast. And when a, a fintech company or a payments company is looking at Europe as a place to do business, you know, it's a complex place. Um, there's a currently um, 27 member states of the EU and, um, you know, spread across all different languages and uh, different rules, different regulations, etc. So, um, you know, the challenges that companies are looking to do, um, they need to find a location that offers them stability and um, it offers them consistency that, you know, it has a talent base there for them to be able to exploit and use to um, launch their services into the European market. And I find a lot of them are, are also looking for a, a location that has a very innovative culture. And um, Ireland, uh, I'm glad to say, has, has all those things that I've mentioned. And, you know, when companies look at stability, we're talking about a very, um, you know, stable government, with, um, you know, uh, good regulatory and political, um, you know, laws, etc. And um, they're also looking for a very pro-business environment, which Ireland um, has, and the Irish government um, is, is very pro-business and, you know, very supportive of business um, that comes into Ireland. And again, being small, 5 million versus, you know, um, there is 500 million people in the whole of the uh, European um, area. Um, that's, that's the attraction to a lot of these fintech companies. There is business to be won there. It's a very important market. And um, I think when companies are looking at um, scaling, they are looking for a location, like I've just said, that, um, that they can be, that offers them certainty. And I think, you know, investors don't like uncertainty. They, 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 they want to know, okay, what's happening here? How do you go about it? How do you do it? And is there people there? Is, is the company, is the country welcoming and wants us there? So I think Ireland has been uh, to the forefront of that over the last, um, dare I say, 70 odd years, which IDA Ireland has been in existence for. So. Yeah, well, thank you for that additional context. Uh, that's super helpful. Uh, and, and you laid out nicely the benefits, like why, why companies are interested in doing this and making this kind of a leap and, and the role that IDA has played, the role that Ireland has played um, in, in development of all of this, which is uh, wonderful. Uh, let's come back to that question about the challenges though. I think, you know, organizations work with you because they, under, they recognize the challenges of opening up in a new foreign market, in a European market, maybe they haven't uh, worked in before. So what, what are the types of things that you see um, being those the biggest hurdles, the biggest challenges, as challenges that you're able to help them deal with as they're making that move. Well, I think you know pre-COVID, 
um, when we would engage with a client, when I'd engage with a client over here um, um, that are interested in looking at Europe, well, we'd always encourage them to, come, to uh, travel over and physically take a look at Ireland, where we would introduce them to the business community there. So, you know, we take the headache out of where you start. And nine times out of 10, it's um, top of the list is um, not surprisingly talent. Are they going to be able to get the talent there? Because what's the point in setting up in a country and then you can't find the people? So, um, in, in, you know, so we will articulate to them a, the types of universities there, the types of graduates that are coming out of universities there. And you'll find a lot of fintech companies in Ireland, um, like Stripe, PayPal and MasterCard all have, um, you know, some sort of a technology element there, in particular Stripe, um, who put their first engineering hub outside of the US into Ireland. And, you know, that was a big testament um, because Stripe is, uh, you know, I think the most valuable fintech unicorn out there. I think their current valuation is about 95 billion. And um, so they started in Ireland back in 2014 and have scaled uh, significantly since then. And um, so I think talent is always to the fore. And then for a fintech company as well, regulation is important because, you know, Ireland is a very committed member of the EU. And in particular, since Brexit, Brexit has happened and the UK have decided to leave the, the, the EU, um, if a fintech company has a regulatory element to its business, well, then they're going to have to be regulated in one of the 27 EU member states. And um, so, um, you know, quite a few of them have um, decided to get regulated in Ireland. And ultimately, what that means is that they can then passport their services throughout the European Union. So, um, and then, you know, all, all the other um, obvious um, uh, decisions around cost and, um, you know, well, again, pre-COVID, it was more office uh, locations, etc. But, you know, we've been successful over the last 18 months, um, even with the remote um, so, um, services. So those virtual or those site visits we spoke about, we brought them all online. And uh, one in interesting company up in Seattle, Remitly, um, so they undertook a, a virtual site visit with us and ultimately have set up uh, uh, their operation in Cork, which is down the southern part of Ireland, um, where they're servicing uh, the EU and EMEA region from an operation centre. So it's, uh, you know, business has continued, um, albeit remotely at this moment in time. Yeah, that's, that's wonderful. Um, and let's zoom in on that, the talent piece, because... I agree. I mean, that's that's one of the big things that that uh, companies are thinking about when they're looking at any sort of international expansion, um, and, and you know, do, is the human capital pool uh, in that new location going to meet their needs? Right. You, so right. you already mentioned how how you're helping tap them into the universities and the various places where where individuals are getting trained up on these things. Uh, maybe we can talk a little bit more about. Uh, some of the types of government funded training programs that are out there uh, to, to support uh, these companies moving into the European space, uh, what those look like in terms of talent, skill, competency development, and getting you know, more workers in the technology space and in the STEM fields. Yeah, um, well, you know, Ireland has been very successful over the last um, number of years. We're very open to immigration. And um, when you look, if you were to walk down our version of Silicon Valley, we call Silicon Docs, where you have Google and the Facebook and the who's who of the tech companies there. Um, the amount of international workers that are working currently in Ireland is, is really impressive. And um, I, I think the percentage is 17% of workers currently in Ireland are, are non-Irish. And um, a lot of those workers will be working in IDA client companies and all the different language skills that are available. Um, I think on um, supports that IDA and the Irish government offer clients when they come in, they range in, um, from employment supports to training supports and then um, research and development supports. And I think it's fair to say, within the fintech community and the payments community, the research and development uh, supports tie in with their activity there. Not them all, but, but um, quite a few would have research and development centers in Ireland. So for example, you look at MasterCard. Uh, MasterCard um, started back in Ireland in, um, I'd say 2009. They actually acquired an Irish company called Overscom at the time. And so uh, very quickly, they realized that the talent, particularly the engineering talent in Ireland was very, very impressive. And in fact, 
um, their global CIO at the time um, was based in Ireland. And, um, and so from there, they've scaled up. And um, just last year, they've announced that um, they are um, that their technology hub in Ireland is their technology hub for Europe and their only tech hub in Europe. And that comes back to uh, the, the skill set that's available. And what I mentioned earlier with Stripe and their engineering hub, there's been a lot of focus on creating um, good software engineering graduates. Um, I think the government has, uh, has had the foresight of investing in the schools and universities, in particular to try and encourage um, females uh, to, you know, think about STEM and to think about careers in engineering. And, you know, we have one of the highest rate of STEM um, graduates per capita in Europe currently in the 20 to 29 age group. And we also have the highest number of female um, engineers in Europe. And that's all testament to um, supports that the government has put into the universities in Ireland so that we ensure the graduates coming out of our universities are equipped with the relevant skills for employers that want to do business in Ireland. Yeah, well, and that's great to hear too. And, and I know it, it can be a challenge, especially in the tech and STEM fields, uh, to have more of a diverse uh, employee uh, formation, right? To, to, to get uh, more females in uh, and, and other uh, minority groups, uh, it, it, it can be a challenge. And I, I know, I mean, that's something that's talked about around here all the time. In Utah, you know, we're a predominantly white population. Um, and so we, we have a, a bit of a tech hub here called Silicon Slopes, um, just north of where I'm located. And we have, you know, Adobe and Qualtrics and a lot of other uh, really great tech companies um, that are all putting a lot of time and energy in trying to attract more of a diverse workforce to come and work for them. And it's a challenge because, you know, largely they're trying to attract people from out of the state to come move here because, you know, we're not a terribly diverse state and we're getting more and more so. Um, and so it's interesting. I think, you know, uh, I think most people listening are probably attuned to the DE&I uh, elements and trying to encourage inclusion in the hiring process and, and more equity and, and those sorts of things. Uh, so I appreciate the work. Uh, that you're doing and that the government is doing to help uh, support yeah. that and the expansion into these spaces in, in European countries. Yeah, and I think, you, you, you know, one thing that our clients certainly um, communicate back to us is how happy they are with the diverse culture that is in Ireland. And, um, and in particular, there is a number of um, great um, female leaders uh, running uh, significant financial institutions from Ireland. So like Wells Fargo, uh, Stripe, City, all led by great um, uh, you know, female leaders. And again, it, it's very important um, as the world evolves. So um, yeah, no, absolutely. Diversity is, um, is certainly um, very important to IDA Ireland, not just IDA Ireland, but to our client base and uh, all um, feedback to date has been positive on that front. Yeah, and we should note, I, I think it's probably maybe obvious, hopefully obvious to, to everyone listening that when we talk about diversity, we're not just strictly talking about gender diversity or racial ethnic diversity. We're talking about cognitive diversity. We're talking about various cultural backgrounds, language, you know, a whole Correct. wide range of things. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that is really one of the compelling aspects of expanding into the European markets because it's such such rich, rich long history uh, with people from a wide range of, of backgrounds, cultural perspectives, that, that brings a richness into the workforce, that brings a richness into, you know, expanding into new markets and, and uh, new, new uh, uh, mm -hmm. attracting new customers you know, to your business. So I, I think that's all very wonderful. Uh, maybe as we get close to wrapping up, uh, let's hone in now in our last few minutes and talk a little bit more about what organizational leaders who are considering um, this kind of a, a transition, this kind of a move and expansion, what they should really first and foremost be considering. What, what are the like core two, three questions they should be asking as they're kind of mulling that over and trying to think about, is this right for them right now? Okay, I think firstly, uh, access and access to the European Union, I think, is 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 key because, again, um, you know, particularly for U.S. companies, um, uh, going to a location, 
where, like I, I mentioned earlier, they can, if they want to be regulated from and can passport their services across the European Union and can freely hire people. So that 500 million people to 250 million people are at work. So, um, and again, that brings in um, a lot of fantastic talent and um, a lot of different cultures with great language skills. And so I think that's key. Um, I also think um, uh, on top of that is, you know, the, the talent pool and where they're going to get um, the, ta the talent from. And then also, I think the, the, the political and regulatory environment. And um, but going back to the talent piece, their first hire, um, you know, the first hire for anybody in a new market is crucial. And I think it's important from um, an Ireland's perspective is that we have a, a number of senior uh, leaders running these operations in various companies across various sectors that are, are held in extremely high regard. So you don't necessarily have to bring somebody over. Um, you can find that um, senior leader there who's you know done it before and is proven. And I think you know that's that's the key focus for for leaders here when they're looking at Europe as a location. Is okay. Uh, are we going to be accessing everything we need to? Um, and then how do we go about finding that person um, to set up and run that operation? And I think having that organically in, in a country is, is, is key and, and makes it somewhat easier and more straightforward for, for companies and for first-time investors. Yeah, yeah, well said. Well, David, it has been a real pleasure. The time has flown by. I know we're getting close to the end of our time together today, but before we close, I wanted to give you a chance to share with listeners how they can get connected with you, uh, IDA Ireland, find out more about you, your work and, and get connected with your team. And then give us a final word on the topic for today. Yeah, um, so no, um, anybody that has any interest in, um, in exploring uh, more about um, Ireland and our Europe in the FinTech, financial services or any space, um, you can hit me up on LinkedIn, um, I'm on Twitter, and what I would encourage everybody um, to take a look at our website, um, IDA Ireland dot com where they'll find out a lot of information on Ireland and the types of supports I mentioned earlier and how we go about helping um, companies. And uh, it's worth mentioning, it, this is a free service that we offer. So and that's another thing that some people are like, what, it's free? Um, yeah, it's free because um, you know we're here to help partner and assist you guys to be a success in, in, in your chosen um, you know, fields from Ireland um, and into Europe. So. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, David. It's been a real pleasure. I encourage listeners to reach out, to get connected, find out more about what David and his team can do for you. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week.